What's up? Hey guys, it's Ivan. Um, so in our previous videos, we've set up the autoresponders on GetResponse. We've integrated it with ClickFunnels. We got everything to work together nicely. Uh, today, I just wanted to delve a little bit deeper into the individual emails and go over the five features and the five things you should most likely be using or you are most likely to use when setting up these emails. All right. Um, so I wanted to delve into a little more detail there. So first thing we have to do then is let's create a new autoresponder and just go over all the features on that autoresponder. Um, now make sure before you click on create autoresponder that it's set to the right campaign. Originally it was at YouTube tryouts, but our campaign is diabetes as you saw in our video where we made our landing page. Uh, and in fact, what you can do, because it always pops up as that campaign that when you first signed up, you don't want that. Just click on my campaigns list from the top here, click on uh, campaign list, and then select the campaign that you want and click make default. That way, whenever you log in, it's going to automatically have that campaign. Okay, so, so just a little thing I found useful. So next, let's create an autoresponder <clears throat> for that campaign. Let me just make sure it's on the right one. And let's see what's available there. Um, so I'm just going to go create new email. So we need to make a message name. Um, so I would really recommend making something personal uh, because when you're opening your emails, you're most likely to open it from a friend, right? So you need to build that connection. And I would recommend you guys check out the videos by Miles Beckler. I'm going to put the, um, some of his videos down below. Uh, he, he talks a lot about this, so he can shed some light on why it's important for you guys to um, make the emails personal, not uh, not come off as someone like a salesman, right? Very important. Uh, so let's just make a random name. Let's say, um, <clears throat> you know, um, here's my story um, about my battle. And we could say, you know, about my, my battle with diabetes, right? So maybe I'll say, I'll copy that. Maybe I'll put their name here. So I'm going to say first name. So whatever the people say their first name is, Billy. So uh, Billy, here's my story about my battle, okay? And then they're going to read it. They're going to be intrigued because they signed up to your list in order to learn something about the diabetes, right? Whatever it is you have on your landing page. So we're going to assume that we have some free offer or something like that for them, okay? So I would also recommend uh, not using any one of these templates in particular. Uh, maybe use them for a specific like newsletter for a specific event like Valentine's Day and you can send them, I don't know, some... Um, if we look for or like a like a birthday thing, right? Like, hey, it's your birthday, and you can send one of those. Otherwise, I would recommend starting from scratch. Um, so maybe go to blank template. And so here's the five things uh, we should be using in our autoresponder, and five things you should know about. Okay. So I'll go from top to bottom. So starting over here with a message. So first thing I'm going to do is let me just insert this text block, and just say, hey, here's my story something like that. Um, so one thing you could do is you could increase or decrease the size of this message. So um, if you've tested out this message, you sent it to your computer email, and you notice that your message is way too narrow or way too broad, you can adjust it. And you can do that by doing it here where it says message. The maximum is 999 pixels, okay? So you can't like make it way too big. So for example, right now it's at 600. If I click 999, it's going to become much uh, broader, okay, much much larger. So you can play around with it, see what works for you. My default, I would recommend 750. This works well both in mobile view, as you can see here, and it works in uh, on the computer when you open it. So I would probably go with 750, but play around with it, find what works for you. Okay, so that's one. You can also change the color of, by the way, of just the text by going. See, it's stuck a bit. Oops, sorry about that. I'm not sure why it's uh, giving me a hard time. There you go. So you can change the background just by clicking here. Make sure you click OK when you select your background color. Um, what I did for a while is I just kind of exited out of it. And then I was thinking, hey, why why doesn't this work? Uh, but you, you need to make sure that you click OK. Um, so it colors, okay? So that's that. So that's one of the things. Uh, the other thing is the background outside of the text. So you can change the color here. You can make it again red, or you can set up a picture by clicking that little icon there and you can upload. So you can click my images and upload whatever you want, or you can pick one, you know, whatever they have available. You can search for something. So for example, we want, you know, handwriting. 
Um, so notice how it repeats itself. You do have the option to change um, how often it repeats or if it doesn't repeat at all. Just click this here, edit image at the top. And over here, see it says both. That means it repeats both vertically and horizontally, okay? So we need to change that. So maybe make it only vertical or maybe make it only horizontal or just no repeat at all. So there's just gonna be one image, okay? So you have that option. Um, and basically you can use that, okay? If you don't want the image, just delete it. All right, so simple as that. You can also create your own image, you can upload it, and then you can play around with it where, where you want it to look like, okay? So that's two. Number three cool feature is you can add image and text block together, or you can just add the image by itself. So for example, if I add this image and text block, now it's gonna give you a space where to put it in. <clears throat> so you can put that in. So I'm gonna put, you know, words in, I'll say, so I started by being super happy and then this thing happened. Unexpectedly, sorry about my spelling. <laughs> there you go. Unexpectedly and I lost everything. X, 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 okay, blah, 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 whatever. So you can, again, you can insert your image. You know, for simplicity, we're gonna do this. You can change your image kind of size. Um, just by playing around with this little slider here. You can also actually crop the image. So as you see, this image, it's, it, it's, it's a bit too long for us, right? So what I would do is I would go here into this image editor, and I would probably crop this image a little bit. So I'm going to click this crop button. Um, you could also add text. You could you could manually draw something, etc., etc. Just play around with it. And you, can, you know, you can, you can add some effects like all that. Um, so I'm just going to just crop it for now. And you can click on original so it doesn't maintain the ratios because otherwise if you drag it, it's not going to let you drag it the way you want to. Sorry, let me see that. Hmm. Okay, so I, I guess the image is too small for us to really be playing around with it too much. Uh, but, but basically, if you click on original, it will allow you to just have your own ratios um, of this because otherwise it doesn't let you change the ratio, right? And you have to stick to whatever it is. And in fact, it's not letting me write anything. It changes automatically to this for some reason. Uh, but basically, when you click on original, it just allows you to uh, crop it however you want to without uh, having the ratios. So the picture is probably too small for this. That's why it's giving us such a hard time. Um, but Basically, yeah, you can you can you can crop the image there, okay? So I'm just gonna exit out of that. So you write this. Um, you see, this is a bit too long, so I'm just gonna shorten it. So you can um, change the the width or the height also by just again exit out of that. Just by adjusting this here on the side, making it smaller like that. Okay, so that's also a way you can cut it uh, or you can crop it. Okay. Um, and you can also adjust some text. So if you want more spacing in between the text, just click that. Sorry, no, spacing in between the text is here. And then what this does is this adjusts the distance. So for example, if, if you click here, it's gonna adjust the distance above that text. So if I decrease it, the, the distance at the top decreases. If I put this down, then it's gonna adjust the distance below the text. So if I decrease this, as you can see, that distance decreases, okay? So it can't go less than zero, obviously. Um, so that's it for that feature. You can also have the image on the right hand side, etc, etc. But these are some basic features like everything else you, you guys should know. You can bold it, you can uh, select the text font, select the text size, etc, etc. Also you can choose the background of this as well, just like we did in the first case, okay? Cancel, and there you go. I think, it, I think the fact that when I, when I click on this, it doesn't let me um, unclick is because of my this little yellow thing I have going on there, just to help you guys see. It's not letting me. Anyway, third thing, uh, or fourth thing now, right? So the first thing we did was the message actually size, how long or um, narrow it is. Uh, the second thing we did was the background. You can change the picture. The third thing was the image text. So the fourth and fifth are really about links. So this is where you're actually going to present the product to the client. If you're selling something, this is where you're gonna say, hey, check out this video. Or if you're giving away something for free. So our first email is usually about, hey, you asked for this, here you go, right? So we need to make a link. We need to make them download that product, what we said we would give them, usually a PDF file or something like that, like a video. So here's how we do the link. And I'm not sure again how, why this is... Um... Anyway, so <laughs> I guess I'll have to play around with it like this. So for example, um, suppose you want to say, 
let's delete that and let's say, hey, there, here's my story. I started off like this, and then I tried this awesome product, okay? So something like that. I mean, obviously, that's not something you, you, you want to start off your um, message with, but it's going to help you, um, like, if, if you put a link, it's going to help you sell, obviously, right? So we need to highlight whatever you want to have the link in there. So I started off like this, and then I tried this awesome product. So maybe we can highlight awesome product. And then we're going to go to our click magic. And as you can see in this video uh, where we set up our custom domain uh, and we masked that nasty affiliate link, I've actually also taken the liberty of creating um, a mask for the actual affiliate link itself. So in this here link, we've only created a link for our landing page, but I've also created a link for our main, for our main sales page right here. So this is what we need to put, right? Because Hi, people, my name is... people already saw our main um, landing page, right? So they don't need to see it again. So I'm just going to copy this here, main page, I'm going to go back, and I will click on this little icon here, this hyperlink icon, and I'm going to place the URL there. Now, if you learned from our this video on click magic where we determined our exact traffic source it is very important guys for you to track what day this is what exact link this is is this the first link or the second link or the third link it is very important because you need to build and test your autoresponders based on that how many people click the first thing how many people click the second one okay so again as you saw in this video what we do to to set that up on our click magic so we can track it is uh, add subdomains with forward slashes. So for example, we can say day, this is day three, and slash link one, for example, right? That way we know that when we get our results from click magic of the traffic, we see that some people clicked this link from day three and link one. And you know that, hey, something I did here works right. I should keep doing this, okay? So then we click okay, and then boom, you have that. Let me just click refresh page. I don't know why it's giving me such a hard time. Oh, and it reset everything. Okay. Well, basically, <laughs> you guys have the idea. So let me just insert this text block in here again. Um, I'll select um, select something, and I'll put a link here. Okay. So basically, you get the idea. You write something uh, like, "Here's my awesome product." So I started off poor, or I started off unhealthy, but then I tried this. Okay. And then you, you can highlight this and put in a hyperlink. And then we said day three, link one. Okay. So this time I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to save this as a draft. And then here I'm going to say, um, here is my story. So maybe this, this will be my title, right? Now, um, in an email, when you write an email to a friend, you usually don't have a title. So you don't actually have to write it like this, but just just throwing it out there, right? If that is something you want to do. Um, so let me save it as draft again. Let's see why it's huh, look at that. Okay. Sheesh. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I don't know why it's giving me such a hassle today. But yeah. Hey guys. I started off healthy. But then I tried this awesome product. Okay. <laughs> All right, there you go. So that's fine. I'm not going to click refresh anymore. I think if I save on draft, this thing goes away though. So that's good. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to click 750. So, you know, as, as my recommended dimensions. So that's that. Um, so you can put a link. You can also add a button. So this also looks pretty cool. Uh, you can change the background of the button. All right, don't forget to click OK. And you can obviously add the link here. And then here you can maybe say day three slash forward slash button. And then just, just you, there's no save for that. So I mean, here, you can, I guess you can just save as draft and that goes away. OK, there you go. Now, if you think, you know, there's not enough space there, you can adjust that. So like we said, we go, we click on that button or whatever feature we want to have more space. Click on this little link here. Click on up top, you see the little arrow pointing up, that means it's adding space up. And then set the space, so increase, oops, right click by accident. Then we can increase the space here, all right? And you can also increase the font, you can change the font color. So if I want black, it's gonna be black, etc., etc. okay? So that's pretty much it. Um, 
Now, if you are, so this is the way to do it with links. Now, if you are inserting just a separate file, you can click here, but the problem is the file cannot exceed 400 kilobytes. So it actually, it's not a very large file. It may be one PDF page with some pictures and some text, two or three, you may not be able to fit it in. Uh, so in the next video, I really want to show you guys how you can do that using Multimedia Studio here on uh, GetResponse. Um, and it just automatically allows you to set up a link. And then you can kind of click on that PDF file in order for it to be uploaded, right? Because otherwise you cannot upload a large PDF file this way, okay? Um, so that's basically it. So we looked at the five features. We looked at the image actual, actual dimensions, actual size. We looked at the background color and the background picture, maybe if you want to set it and kind of the, the options available that go with that. We looked at an option to add an image and how to play around with the image, how to play around with the text and how to add links using a regular link or using a button. And in the next video, we want to use Multimedia Studio to uh, be able to upload a large file. Okay, uh, so that's about it. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.